All right, guys, we're getting um, into a time period here where people are thinking about land management and they want to start creating these uh, food plots in the woods for deer. And I want to take a little bit of time to discuss that today. And you can get away with this. Um, there's a right way and wrong way with doing it. Um, right now, we're, we're standing on this bench system here that wraps around this hill. We got a field over to our right and a huge hill um, down to my left here. And we're standing on this little bench system and a lot of people want to create these food plots in the woods and usually from what i've seen it's like a quick thing where it's like last minute deals where you know you guys you know, just pick any area you rake out the leaves and you throw some seed down typically majority of that seed is going to be ryegrass and um that's probably the worst uh, seed that you can plant for deer to be attractive and um, there's there's a good way of doing this and we have you know plenty of videos on the channel to support this um, we'll take you through some steps here um, the first step when you're doing these you know uh, plots in the woods and most people that are doing these are we, we have limited access right so you have limited equipment and these things can be done with you know hand tools I've done it many times but uh, your number one thing with this I don't care how big it is you know it could be a sixteenth of an acre eighth of an acre smaller than that you know you just, you have to work with what you have and the first thing you guys want to do is if you can pick an area that you can get in and out of you can access through the backside through a ditch system a ridge um, whatever it is you can access through some thick cover to get around in a non-deer area that you can get in that food plot and once you have that area there's a huge mistake which is lack of sunlight, which uh, a lot of guys you know face, and with that you're just going to get in there and cut some trees down. You know you got to you're going to cut some trees down. You got you can cut them flush with the ground. Um, that'll work well. You can use a chainsaw. You can use a handsaw. I've done it both ways. Um, once you clear a certain amount of trees out of the area, and most of the time it's going to be covered in leaves. You're going to have that that layer of leaf. Uh, on top before you get down to the, the good soil or decent soil um, that's not leaf covered and once you get down to that point um, you're going to have to either use a leaf blower to blow all these leaves out of the way to get down to that you know soil lever level and you can use a leaf blower you can use a rake I've done it many times um, and once you get past that leaf layer you're going to have to do a soil sample because leaves when they decay and they rot and they turn back into soil is very acidic so you're going to, have to get a soil sample typically from what i've seen it's going to be roughly anywhere from a 4.5 to about a 5.3 um, ph which is very acidic uh, you're going to have to add tons of lime um, soil sample will tell you exactly how much you need to do um, once you get that lime down you can use an implement called the groundhog max um, to work that lime into the ground a little bit and then let that sit. You guys can do this, you know, we're in January now. You can start working on this now as long as, long as you don't have snow covered ground. Um, you can start working on this in January, February, March. Get that lime down to where you have enough time to help neutralize that soil um, before you come in, into uh, planting season. And some things, you know, you have to get down to sunlight because without sun, uh, the plants can't photosynthesize and which creates vitamins and different minerals and de helps develop root structure and in that plant and one of the signs is when you don't have enough sun is going to be um, when the plants grow very fast and then when you get like a dew or a wind or a rain the plant you know say it's five inches tall it just flops over lays flat on the ground that's because it develops heavy tops and a weak root system without sun um, you need sun to create that uh, root system and without a root system the plants are weak and they fall right over so you have to get enough sun and air for that and with that said um, you get enough sun you get the lime down your next step is to consider what the plant um, typically um, in these areas if you're wanting to um, they're not really going to feed deer you know year-round they're mainly going to be a little kill plot a little pass-through area um, my recommendation in the spring, or, uh, spring and summer would be an annual clover. Um, annual clovers do well in these types of situations. Uh, you could also do buckwheat. 
Now buckwheat loves heat, so you're gonna have to plant that, you know, after your uh, dangers of frost. Uh, could be end of April, could be May 15th, could be May 30th. Um, we typically plant around the last weekend of May 28th, somewhere around that area, June 1st. Um, that's when we start planting our, our fall, our, our uh, spring plots. So you can work that ground with the groundhog max, disturb it a little bit, as long as you have bare soil. And with clover, you can just go right in there and just broadcast it right over top of the soil um, before rain, um, and you'll get good germination. You know, follow the soil samples with, you know, fertil fertility levels and all that um, right before the, a good rain, and that rain will get in there, it'll pound it, pound that clover seed down into the dirt and you'll get good germination. It's pretty simple. Um, once you get that germination, um, it's gonna grow. Um, pretty, it should grow pretty good as long as you got enough sunlight and you know, over time that pH will start work, that lime will start working on the pH level and it'll start raising it up. Um, when fall comes, take that buckwheat or buckwheat or clover that you planted and you can disc that back into the soil and over time, You'll, you will get soil. You'll start building good soil in that ground and um, you'll be good to go. Come fall, you can plant um, you know, some winter wheat, some oats, winter rye. Um, there's different mixtures out there now uh, from Domain, which is a company I, I recommend now because it's a company that doesn't have ryegrass in their seeds. They separate the seed mixtures from big seed to small seed, which is super awesome. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. Um, for that company, but they have lots of different blends you guys can choose from that, that grow in kind of a, you know, shady areas. Um, some clover, some chicory, they have some, some different types of brassicas and, and, and sort of things like that. Um, you can still buy, you know, a 50 pound bag of winter wheat. Um, you know, that's my go-to for, for situations like this. Um, even big fields, you know, I love planting, you know, grains, uh, wheat, rye, oats, it's my favorite mixture. Um, but uh, that's pretty, that's the steps, guys. You know, you just have to follow the steps. It's not rocket science. Um, you just have to make sure that you get down to bare soil, you incorporate that lime into the ground, and you try to keep something in there green and growing uh, for as many months as possible. But the number one failure with these food pots in the woods is lack of sun. You gotta get sun in there, guys. You gotta, you gotta get in there, do some work, cut some trees down uh, with a chainsaw, handsaw, whatever you have. You know, we've, I've had a video you know, a few years ago where there was a bunch of deadfalls and we pulled them out with a chain and a four wheeler, dragging them off to the side, um, getting there with hand saws and uh, chainsaws and we just cut all these sapling trees down everywhere. And um, it created a, a very successful, uh, sustainable, uh, palatable food plot. So hopefully this helps you guys. Any questions, post them down below. And uh, we're excited to bring you some more videos um, here in the next couple of weeks uh, in regards to working on food plots in the woods. Um, it's, no, it's never too, too soon to start working on these. Any questions, post them down below. And I'll see you guys on that next video.